very stabby. That video though, that video into us, that video is like I'm a I'm from what is that? I'm from Southern Texas and I'm a female. <laughs> Say, I'm from Port Arthur and I'm a female. Pip Squad, baby. P O P. I be at. I be at. P O P. Pip Squad. I'm legally blind. I, I can see, but I'm legally blind. I'm not a robber. I, 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 I my assault case and my drug case <laughs> ain't got nothing to do. P O P. P O P, baby. Pip Squad. I be at. I be at. I be at. Holy dying. They had dude up against the wall. He was like, I'm through talking. I don't want to disrespect you. <laughs> <laughs> he was trying to hold his composure. You hate to laugh at people's, like, <laughs> the bad stuff that people that do. That young man did the best funny. that he could do. Under the, and then my man just walked through. He didn't he have was nothing telling. to say. My man was telling, though. He was telling something so scandalous. Man, he was about to. He was like... It was like such and such. So when did you stab him? He was like, I did not stab anybody. <laughs> but... I did not stab anybody. They right. were basically saying there was stabbing involved. However, stabbing did occur, <laughs> but it wasn't me. That's P funny. P.O.P. I said that come across the timeline. I didn't know what Cass was talking about. I'm like, what is he talking did about? Did you hear that? that I'm Lincoln. a female. Did you hear that song I sent? That sample that Holy Die. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you talking about something that had me wrong. <laughs> it was like, Holy Die. <coughs> Pimp Squad. Holy dying. I be at. Pimp Squad for life. <laughs> he was like, Are you. Is it your last day, Budo? Yeah, I'm a Budo, but, but I'm not. I'm not a Budo. That's my mama. That's my my family. But but I'm I am, not though. a Budo. Man, he was. She was. That under was. Pressure. That was classic. Absolutely. That was, that's classic watch, internet. That's like classic internet, internet fodder. I can, yeah. I can watch that in the morning to get my day started. Holy dying. I be out. I be out. I be out. How was they smoking cigarettes? They were smoking cigarettes with their hands tied behind their backs. That's, you that's pretty, want it. You want talented. You wanted that square. <laughs> you wanted that square. <laughs> like you didn't know where, what, when your next, when you was going to get your next square. You wanted that square. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to the Pick and Roll Podcast. I don't need, I'm not keeping track of the numbers no more. Number 12. Something like that. It's number something. It's number the next one. A little bit of a hiatus. We had some great things going on recently. You know. Um, took a little bit of a break. Uh, back in. Back on the scene. Trying to hold it down. <laughs> hold it down. Hold it down. Pimp squad, baby. Pimp squad. P.O.P. Yeah, we're making fun of you. That, yeah, we are. So up. That's hilarious. Get over, get over it. So today, today we're going to do a little bit kind of a little scatter shot, you know, talk about a few different things. Um, we want to talk about video games, too. Um, where do, you know, w w with the coming of the holiday season, you know, Xbox and PS4 kind of come into their own now. Um, Destiny being the biggest launch in history i don't i don't see how it was bigger than grand theft auto 5 because i mean everybody had that but yeah. it's more of a brand name though yeah yeah um just video games in general how it affects and, and more specifically about how it affects people in our demographic um because video games have carved out a niche as a recreational activity that it's taken the place of a lot of things you know truth be told and there's a very clear delineation between people who do play video games, people who really play video games, and people who play not. Right. Their experiences are completely different. Absolutely. We're also going to talk about uh, the new album Aquarius by Tinashe. 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 Whatever. And really talk about, kind of continue the conversation that we had uh, last time when we reviewed the Chris Brown album, and kind of talk about how the lines have kind of blurred with r&b in terms of subject matter in terms of hip-hop and singing it's kind of all blurred together so we'll talk about a few things have a little bit of fun how you doing i'm doing pretty good as a matter of fact i know like you said we took a little bit of a break but as we talked about in episode one we're, you know extremely busy men we have responsibilities that uh, include a lot of things outside of doing this podcast but yes back in the saddle let's get it. yes nfl is in full swing oh yeah uh, week five this week 
right. um, you know, as we go to tape, we have tried to stay away from the scores and things from today. But, you know, a few things are already evident. Um, you know, it, one thing that I just wanted to touch on was it seems as though offense is down a little bit this year. Yeah, you, you well, um, passing is down to a degree. You don't see – people throwing for 415 and 440 no, and no. things like that like Five you did the first games. few weeks of last year. And I think that's due to the Peyton Manning start. Peyton Manning showed the NFL what was up last year. And so it was kind of a boat race situation where even though um, if you look at the numbers, the average is going to be skewed for the first quarter or first half of the NFL from last year because of what Peyton Manning was able to do. But you still have quite a few quarterbacks that are putting up putting up numbers. Um, <clears throat> even though Aaron Rodgers was not necessarily, uh, you know, shooting for the gold um, all over the field last week, uh, mm -hmm. the performance prior to that, um, he was able to put the ball up. Uh, Andrew Luck is having an awesome start to yeah, the season. Yeah, he is. He is. Um, and you know, Peyton Manning <clears throat> is you know he's, he's probably going to remain steady. But like you said, the usual heavy hitters, the guys that stay up around 350. Um, it's it hasn't been a consistent uh, a, a consistent output there, and I, you know what I think that is is not necessarily because of the quarterbacks. I don't know who the who the powerful offensive lines are in the league right now, mm -hmm. and I can't really place on who is the outside of Calvin Johnson, who's the big time wide receiver right now. Who's that guy? Well, who's um, the who's the guy you got to double every week? That's a good question. That's a good question. One I week think, it's, you know, Steve Smith Sr. The next week. Senior. It, What's right. up with that, by the way? The whole putting the I don't senior know. I think he's, I think he just, you know, he knows he's getting old. And I think he just, you know. Come on. Steve Smith is always, you know, doing something a little extra for the fans, you know. Maybe but, he, maybe it was like a shot at Steve Smith. But he doesn't. The other Steve Smith that plays for the Giants doesn't even play anymore. I think it's a shot at Tory. Ah. Wow. You might be, you know, I'm the Smith on this team now. And that's just me playing around. I, I don't really don't think that. But it could be. You never know what, what the dynamics are on that team. Yeah. You know, and Torrey Smith's, you know, production was supposed to go through the roof coming into this year. And then Steve Smith shows up. There you go. You never know. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it does seem like it's down. DeMarco Murray has really stepped out, you know, as a leading rusher in a league where the majority of um, running back running back slots on teams are basically by committee you know mm -hmm. nobody knows what new england's running backs are going to do from week to week one week ridley balls the next week vereen balls i mean nobody knows so they're very unsafe if you're looking at it from a fantasy perspective but i don't even think that they're necessarily fitting the mold when it comes to having a successful running game period yeah um and i think when you look at quarterbacks the big time guys for the most part are down mm -hmm. you got drew Brees is down a little bit. He's still putting up some numbers, yeah. but they're not winning. Nope. Um, <clears throat> Tom Brady is down. Way down. They're not winning. Um, so, you got this kind of strain. You know, Aaron Rodgers is still doing his thing. Jay Cutler is, you mm. know, really, even though you hate Jay Cutler. Still being Jay Cutler. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's going to give you two. He's. I read that he's one of the only, he's like one of only three quarterbacks this season that's put up multiple touchdowns in every game. Yeah. So that's good. Philip that Rivers up. is doing pretty well. Yes, he uh, is. Up to this point. Yes, he is. Excuse me. Um, Dalton. So Dalton, uh, Dalton. They're undefeated. Is okay. Ryan is doing okay. Yeah. Uh, you know. Tony Romo doesn't look terrible. Right, but that their strategy has changed. They're running the ball. They're running the ball. They're running the ball, and it's become. Yeah. And Dez the hasn't had the numbers. Game. Dez hasn't had the numbers. So yeah. Right. <clears throat> um, you know the Lions still can't run the ball to save your life but that's a whole nother story right. so um now we're starting to get the sense of where people are and i think when we talk next week we can talk about after you know five weeks we'll be able to really see because teams that typically are four and one or three and two tend to stand a little bit better of a chance of making the playoffs right and like we always talk about with the nfl it's such a small sample size that Getting a four on one start is very positive. Yeah, very positive. Especially you've already got at least one or two division games mm -hmm. in that first five or six weeks of the season. So mm -hmm. you know if you lose both of them, you can just about uh, you, know, you know you cut your confidence for a playoff run in half. I mean right. if, you, if you're losing to comp, to division teams, um, you know that early in the season, it's gonna it's gonna definitely negative, negatively affect you when you're talking about weeks 12, 12, 13, 14 when it's the money. It's money time. Right. You know, right. you're getting to roll into the playoffs. If you haven't taken care of home, um, 
it, it, it stands to reason that you're not going to have that, you know, the, the record, you know, to even give you a chance to be considered for a playoff run. That's true. Let alone That's a wild true. card. Uh, we need to do our black quarterback watch. <laughs> EJ Manuel, is Teddy going Bridgewater, by Teddy Bridgewater very had a great good. game a couple weeks ago. Right, yeah. EJ Manuel, they're going to probably sit him down indefinitely. I think the reporters came out from his, his Florida State coach said we never intended him to be a starter, and all this stuff is swirl. Oh yeah, all this stuff really? is coming out this morning. Yeah, they're saying we never thought he would be a starter in the NFL. And Gino, it's, yeah, Geno Smith is sucking. Yeah. Uh, bad. 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 The Jets just can't get a break. You know, the Jets have, although the Jets made the playoffs a few years ago, you know, they've never been a team that just electrified anybody. Like, no. since, I, I don't, I'm talking about the Ken O'Brien days. No. I mean, I remember when Dennis Berg got hurt. They wow. have not been good at all the time. I had his tops card. <laughs> 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 wow! Wow! Yeah, the the Jets is something that, especially being from the Midwest, right? Mm -hmm. I never quite understand the fever pitch that fans get to for the Jets. Lions fans, they give you a window into that understanding. Yeah. Um, but the Jets, to me, seem more. I don't know, man. The Jets seem more of a a fixture back east. Um, the way that they portray it on television and the way you hear hear about it on the radio. Um, they just, there's a blind faith there. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I don't know what post-game Jets radio sounds like, mm -hmm. but I imagine it sounds something similar to um, Lions post-game. But see, post-game Lions is usually positive. The Lions always said, well, it was because of this. Was, we were we were in the game. We only lost by eight. If we would have just done this, we would have just done that. Right. Is Jets post-game radio all fire and brimstone, or are they apologists like, uh, typical Lions fans are. I, I wouldn't know. I don't know either, and I, I, I can only imagine what it's like outside of the city. And, and there's always with the Lions, it seems as though um, there's always a very specific. And the reason we talk about the Lions is because you know they are the home team mm -hmm. here. You know, so those of us in our, you know, international audience, just so you'll know, <laughs> you know, we are, we are here at home base. We are here at home base. <laughs> um, and not to get too deep into it because we don't want to waste that much time, but the Lions always find a way to win, uh, find a way to lose. Yep. There's one thing to be very happy about, and there's always something to be very upset about. <laughs> and the thing that you're upset about is something that is typically very menial. So the level of upsetness that you have is magnified because it was by so the fact small. that it's such a tiny thing. Like today they had eight penalties again. <laughs> eight penalties for like 60-some yards. Right, and that's something that they – I think they had kind of moved away from. <laughs> Um, Hands to the face, yep. stupid stuff like that. Looks like the Giants won again. Yeah, three um, or four guys offsides in the in like the last drive. Yeah, it stuff like you're that. like gosh, <laughs> like yeah, that's got to piss you off. That would piss any high school coach off. Exactly. So um, NBA season is right on the mm -hmm. you know on the horizon, um, which is always marked with. I I personally believe that the off season for the NBA is between the time that they stop making roster updates for NBA 2K <laughs> and the time at which the new 2K comes out. So we want to change our conversation and talk a little bit about video games. And video games have found themselves to be, you know, video games have exploded in the last, I mean, it's now almost 30 years. Um, wow. I look at the beginning of video games to be consumer video games to be really when Nintendo came out. Yeah. Now, you had ColecoVision, you had Intellivision, you had Atari. Yeah, I understand. But, when Super Mario Yeah, that was it. Was Duck head button them blocks. <laughs> it changed the game. So, jumping on Koopas. Bringing this up because we're at a series, again, 2K4, 2K15 is coming out soon. 2K15 now is, they have the ability to take a picture of your face and you know do through some kind of technological way they can put your face your actual face on your player and although it's happened in the past in some games mm -hmm. it seems to be a little bit more comprehensive and accurate now they have in addition to being able to play season game you know play a season with a team and exhibitions and stuff online stuff we're all used to you know they have a section called my park i believe okay where 
you play in a certain city and every city's players represent a dirt a different way of playing oh wow you know so what's been happening is guys make their own individual player and as opposed to playing nba ball they're playing in the park with random cats from the internet and building their reputation and being able to move up and do different things and be you know sort of competitive level is there so video games have become video games have kind of usurped a lot of things in terms of recreation among men in this in this society um and i wanted to get you know i wanted to give you an opportunity to speak to some what we were talking about in terms of how times have changed so much and how video games have fitted fit themselves into the framework of masculinity because yeah still to this day video game companies have not been able to access the female psyche right. and on a large scale right what you, what you normally have is i play video games too not as opposed not a, as opposed to you know these video games are for women i mean and, and i guess a lot of that comes because if you look at the history of the heavy hitters when we turn when you come we're talking about video games we're talking about sports games. We're talking about uh, games that involve guns and violence, zombies, um, military um, uh, scenarios. And so these are typically areas where we find uh, find the guys, mm -hmm. uh, younger guys, older guys, you know, racing games, uh, you know, and even, you know, like we talk about the Nintendo um, <clears throat> experience, we had Duck Hunt with a, with a pistol. Right. So... And then the, the heavy hitters, even on Nintendo, you know, Kung Fu and, and Metal Gear and, and basketball games, Tecmo Bowl, and it, they're games that are really, um, and even the adventure games are really catered toward the male psyche. So right. there's a history built there. There's a fabric there. So at this point in time, we have a generation of men who, that, that's just kind of, it's just kind of what we do. Yes. It's just kind of what we do. Yes. We the next console comes out, we buy it. The next game comes out, we buy it, and it's kind of a way that we communicate with each other. Yeah. It's kind of a way that we come to understand what kind of person you're dealing with on a daily basis. Do yeah. you play this or do you play that? Um, how well do you play this? How well do you play that? It's kind of how we we bond, I guess. Yeah, and and, and we talked. One thing we talked about was accessibility and how. You know, now you're dealing with a generation of people, people who are my age and my demographic, you know, because we've roamed into the, you know, from the, the 18, you know, there's, I always look at it as 18 to 24, 25 to 35. Right. And then. Or 25 to 34, then 35 to 44. Yeah. People in our demographic, they're, I've been playing video games now for 30, 30 years. years almost. 30 years. So. There's a certain amount of nostalgia that comes with old Nintendo games and things of that nature, but there's an. I also have an appreciation for how far the technology has allowed video yeah. games to go, and it's the complexity of video games or a lot of video games have are in a situation where if you're if you haven't been doing it, it's hard to get it. It's hard to get to it, and that was my thing I was bringing up earlier. That's why I think. Video games had an opportunity, I think, in maybe the late 90s to um, really uh, galvanize a lot, of a lot of the population that wasn't playing. Mm -hmm. and, and so music has always been kind of all encaps you know, encapsulating right. movies, um, sports, just, you know, spectator sports. Video games had a chance to get a lot of that market, um, but they, I, believe, I believe it was a choice not to. They chose to let the technology just take those games off into the 21st century mm -hmm. with a rocket and what that did was it limited your customer base it limited your customer base to people who already are hip and already are able to go out and play these games because the worst thing and speaking from personal experience i'm not a, a, a first person shooter player i don't play rpgs mm -hmm. i play just sports games or versus games Me too, it is very difficult for somebody like me to say yeah i want to play mm -hmm. like you can't just hop on it's embarrassing it's embarrassing. There's, and then and then you tie in the old way we used to play, right? In the 90s, early 2000s, where we would all gather around in the same room and play each other in the game. And so there's a lot right. of shit talking, a lot of loud, you know. That right. That is almost gone the way of the dinosaur. People don't really play in the same room anymore. It's, everything well, is, is by, you know, on, on the headset. Yeah. It's gone the way of everything else. Right. 
You know, you don't do it in a group anymore. But you know how embarrassing it is to jump on a Call of Duty and not be able to to, yeah. to function in the kill zone? And you get guys who, you know, you may end up, let's say you end up getting the game the, the week that it comes out or whatever. There are guys who have gotten the game. Let's say you get the game the day after it comes out. You happen to luck up and get it. There are guys who are already like, Ranked they, like they've beat this, it. That, they've, they, beat they've beat it. They've beat it 10, 20 times, and and it's always who's getting it first, who's getting it better, mm-hmm. and and it's almost like a uh, there's a hipster vibe to it. Like, right. a, oh wow, I just picked up Destiny. Up, oh, we're ready for the next gen. But but you know, <laughs> yeah, right, right. The social, but you, I can't deny the social element of it. First of all, video games are very time consuming. They can be time mm-hmm. consuming because my I always think about opportunity costs. Yeah. As opposed to me cleaning up my house or opposed to me working in the yard, I'm playing video games. And because typically video games are an activity unto itself. It's difficult to do other things while yes. you're playing a video That's game. That's a very good point. You very know, you can point. listen to music while you're doing other things. You're you can consumed. talk on the phone while you're doing other things, whatever. So, but it's funny how, you know, a, a great experience I had recently was me... My, you know, my one of my friends who lives locally, as well as one of my friends that lives in Miami, um, my father-in-law, uh, and a couple of my friends from Flint. We all met up on Grand Theft Auto, and we all had our different cars, and we all met at the at the strip club. You know what I mean? So it, <laughs> this was funny. So I pull up. I'm the last one to come. I pull up, everybody got their cars backed in to the strip club. Like, backed in with their wheels turned and everything. I just, it was the funniest thing I had ever seen. And we just all kind of hung out and all kind of laughed. So, there's an element when you're kind of left alone to be with people that's fun. But you have to be in a situation where it could be something that's private. Because if you're not into it and you don't have those filters... Video games can be a very negative experience for somebody, and you and, know. And you know, speaking, you know, trolls, talking about negative, you talk about trolls, and then we talk. Kids, we man. talk about this in terms of you know. okay, so how does that look to? And I'm, I'm making this personal because you did it. You're hanging out with your father-in-law, all your partners, and everything. You guys are on a video game. So, so when your wife comes downstairs, okay. she does not see the connection you're making with other people. It's the same thing with. Uh, when I tell my wife that I'm involved in discussions uh, on Twitter, if I, I happen to get into some other, you know, some forum, and we're exchanging ideas, we're exchanging right. ideas. We're you are reading sometimes it's video, and we're we're actually exchanging ideas. But right. when my wife sees that, she does not see any exchange. She sees me in a device. Yeah, that's all she sees right. is the black plastic. Right. You know, and the controller, and and so there is a a disconnect and so you try to say hey why don't you try it but for somebody who enjoys the game Mm -hmm. somebody like you said there's levels there's a gap there's 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 always going to be a gap because between the hand-eye coordination of the actual device that you're using versus making it do what it does i mean the the manual dexterity amongst itself if you're unfamiliar right can be imposing to people absolutely and then making Trans, like translating that action to what's happening on the screen and then having the mindset to know when to do what action on the screen. So it's very complex. You know, my, my wife won't touch a video game. Yeah. You know, Mine and I've, I've, I like, I don't even try Yeah, I, because I know that she's not interested. So, and the thing that I always say is, you know, as I've gotten older, it's much better for me to have this hobby. It's much more cost effective <laughs> than me having other hobbies like going to the casino right or going to gentlemen's club yeah or or just being out of the house period exactly because i i am in the house i'm here i'm accessible you know i'm, I'm doing yeah. what i'm doing i'm still well you know they say well this is what's wrong with this culture yeah. what's wrong with this country i mean people's relationships have ended over we don't years. interact with each other anymore all we do is talk on the phone and text and you know but you are interacting you are interacting, and you all you all are having a moment together. Yeah, it may not necessarily be face to face, so there's some yeah. difference there. But there is some, you know, exchange of ideas, and I think, you know, like you said, there's opportunity cost to it, obviously, but yeah. it's not necessarily a total negative. You know, but but the downside of it is, you know, seeing what not having balance does to young people. Oh yeah. Because 
for kids who play video games constantly, they're essentially social misfits. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the infusion of technology and how it's taken over in terms of the way in which our mind frames work, it's odd to see kids try to interact in a purely one-to-one face-to-face social environment Mm -hmm. because there's such a level of awkwardness that I think that it actually has made children or made kids less mature socially than we than we were right. when we were in school Definitely. because and even though we have video games but what you did on your video game like you talked about it didn't translate to anything that was happening outside of your house right. or outside of your room now there are people whose primary interactions are with people be it through video games through social networking so on and so forth right. so for example I went to the homecoming dance last night and you have very, very specific tiers of people. You have, you know, the jocks who are in the middle of the floor, yelling and screaming, dancing, entertaining each other. There's the young ladies that favor the jocks. Mm-hmm. But you have an entire cadre of people outside of that that are on their phones at the dance. Yeah. Not taking pictures, not... No. Not even talking to each other. They're on Facebook. They're on Twitter. They're probably texting each other. Yes. Yeah. At the dance. So, <laughs> I guess... Saying I never all thought that about say, that. Yeah. Saying all that to say... I mean, we had pagers. <laughs> <laughs> I had a I had a black one that was clear. That Officer Croslin... Yes. Officer Croslin <laughs> took from me my junior year. Let me tell you. <laughs> around Christmas time. Oh. Because he was a police liaison <laughs> dude he told me i had to get my pager at the end of the year so the end of the school year came and he was at the school no more so i had to literally hunt this dude down at the police station to try to get my pager no and i got it back but i got it back six months no after i took it no 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 <sighs> i went through a couple episodes with that at northern but there would there would not be any exchange of property we just we just called the the real authorities, namely mom and my dad. mom and dad. <laughs> yeah, my mom and dad wasn't coming up. I didn't even want to tell them. No, we just, no. we just called the actual authorities. Right. <laughs> I didn't even want to tell them. So, but it all ended up working yeah. out. But I guess I, that's got to be a crazy scene, though. I never thought about that. And so yeah, in turn, I mean, when you look at video games from the perspective from the perspective of a recreational activity, you know how it's blown up competitively. And then look how, you know, when you frame that versus the conversation that's been happening involving football. Yeah. And how football is becoming increasingly, it's increasingly drawing the ire somewhat of mainstream America that's not a part of the football religion as something that is dangerous. They don't Mm -hmm. want their kids to play. Yep. And we have to consider, you know, I had a conversation with uh, the coach, uh, a coach recently, and his concern was he believes that the game is going to look uh, completely different in 15 years. Yep. And you can see it, how games are being called now. We had a couple of student deaths recently. Yeah, that. Um, high school students died. Um, I think one was in Texas. I don't remember where the other one was, but died during a game. Um, one of them, the, the, the gentleman that I do know of, he had a traumatic brain injury wow. during a game. And, you know, it, it's very disheartening from the fact that you know that your kids love what they do. The kids that I, that I deal with, I can tell that they love the game and for it to be taken away from them based on a concern about their safety. You know, I mean, we, I know kids that don't want to come out of the game even though they're hurt. Yeah. You know, I have a guy that's walking around right now and one of his shoulders is like this and the other one is puffy big you know like and it's it's noticeably bigger and it's i don't know whether he has a break or anything but it's been really sore so he hasn't been able to play saying all that to say is football gonna be different in 10 years it's gonna it's well i'm I'm gonna be honest with you i i think it's going to be it's gonna go away and what i mean by go away we have two groups of people leaving the sport simultaneously you have the old guard you know, the guys that invented football, 
You know what I mean? Where we're talking about players, coaches, and fans mm. that are, I don't want to watch this mess anymore. This is tiddlywinks. It's too soft. They are, they favor the quarterback. They favor the offenses. They don't do this. They don't, they're, they're not letting them do this. They're not letting them play the game. They're not letting them play football. And this is not just happening on a professional level. It's happening in college mm. and obviously in high school. And it's happening all over the country. Then you have from the other side, you have parents who are making choices about their children. Not guys that have already started to play. I'm talking about children who may have a propensity for some kind of athletic ability. They're steering them towards other sports because, yes. because of the idea that w of what may happen to their child on the football field. So when you have these two groups veering away from the game, the group that's left in the middle cannot sustain it. You literally do have 10 or 15 years of what we know as football before you know, it, it's, you know, 2030, we may be looking at it in an entirely different game. Not to mention all of the public pressure that's going to come with it as a result from people who are not fans of football. There are people, you got to remember, there are people who are writing books, not articles in, journal, in journals or articles in magazines that nobody reads. Mm -hmm. People who are writing books and are creating volumes of research that will stand in, you know, at, you know, at, at, uh, uh, and academic institutions mm -hmm. as why we should get rid of football not necessarily say i don't like it right. i really would prefer not, not to see it no we have to get rid of it people are putting this stuff out there and it will become part of the discussion as these two groups begin to leave football mm -hmm. and as this group is left and the moneyed interests will no longer have any interest because it's about money over time the the arguments against the sport will mm -hmm. become louder. I would dare to argue that when you look at it from a class perspective, I think that they're, I think that people in the upper classes have already known what a lot of people are already just now figuring out. There was a time in American history where, you know, football was a way of life for everybody. Absolutely. Where it was, you know, the sons of doctors and lawyers and, and all of these people wanted to play. You play football. Right. You play football. But with there being an increase in amount of choices and things of, of sports that kids can play and other things that they can get involved in, football players, football is essentially, as far as players and athletes come from the lower rungs of society. For the most part, yes. And people who are well acquainted with the challenges and with the with the the dangers who are involved just because if you've played the game long enough or watched the game long enough you you walk into the stadium and sit down with the awareness that somebody could have a life altering injury during the game mm -hmm. in pal league in high school in college in 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 the nfl so on and so forth that's right so it's what's going to be left is and, and I I guess I, I understand how social pressure makes change. Social pressure in football is making it where they're changing the technology that's in helmets, they're changing mm -hmm. the rules. I think that at some point there will be looking they will the NFL will look like the CFL very soon. Wow. This the field will be spread wider. Yeah. Defense will become not a bit existing. of an afterthought. Yeah. It's almost arena it, football. Right. It's almost like we'll score. We'll see who can score the most before the clock stops. And that's what, I mean, that's essentially what, what people, the cr criticism of what the NFL uh, has been doing for the last five years, trying to get more points on the board because they believe that attracts more pedestrian sports fans. And I, I think it does just same thing with baseball, wanted more home runs, uh, they uh, <clears throat> they started penalizing hooking different in hockey because they wanted uh, they wanted guys to get that those sixty goal seasons. The NBA and hand checking. Hand checking, absolutely, you know. absolutely, and because uh, the NBA is a lot different than it was in the nineties. A lot different, and and you know? and see, here's my my the beef that I have with it is uh, when I look at the crop of athletes that I see right now, and I'm just saying right now, mm -hmm. meaning the last five years, five to seven years is a right now. The, I believe these are the most talented athletes that we've ever seen, and that's in all sports. I, uh, I believe I believe that. I believe that 100%. Bigger, faster, why? strong, because of the approach. Now, bigger, faster, stronger is be, different be, than Well, because of the approach. Wise. Well, no. it's Bigger, faster, stronger, and more skilled because 
there has never been a part, never been a time in American sports history where we could have people concentrating on the sport alone. A lot of times when we talk about uh, athletes from previous eras, you know, especially when we talk about we talk about baseball. They had day jobs. Football players had jobs in the off season. They weren't just football players. Yeah. Even basketball players did other things when they weren't playing basketball. Yeah. This this crop of athletes do what they do year round. And you you can't forget the propensity of camps and right, especially at youth and AAU. Right. And they the raise them balance. from four years old to dribble through their legs to yeah. to 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 execute a power dribble from timeline to timeline. Yeah. They're a po- a power dribble from a B plus point guard in the NBA could dominate the 70s because they because this is something yeah. that he's been doing since he was nine it's a different game it's I, a di- I will agree you, you see what i'm saying i will agree that not only are players bred differently mm-hmm. um not only is ath- not only are athletics viewed as a career choice yes now especially for parents for their kids um but also we can't discount the science that has went into conditioning. Con- I look yeah. at if you go back and you look at Rocky, Rocky, what is it? Rocky Four. Okay. The the Ivan Drago. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Like, exactly. You know, they they were the Russians were. he had been raised from guy, birth. You know, and, and in a very I don't want to say comedic way or satirical way, but it was it was a very tongue in cheek way. Like you know, he's using all this machine and his punches. Mm-hmm. You know, equal this pounds per square inch. The same stuff is there now. Like, like you know, what I'm saying, how do how do I deal with this intricate detail of my athleticism to become a better athlete? Right. That's Megatron. People weren't talking about core strength in, in right. the '90s. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? People weren't talking about core strength. You know, I, doing Pilates. Yeah, exactly. I think <laughs> I think that one of the reasons I, I don't think that we have any more injuries than we used to. I think that. It's just that athletes are more machinic than they yeah. used to be. I mean, you th- okay? Can Steve Atwater? We just we we we're, we're comparing eras. Can Ronnie Lott hit Megatron? Yes. Can Ronnie Lott hit Megatron and still make the next hit? I don't know about that. There it is, and that's the NFL. I don't know about that. That's what it is. Can the old Rod Woodson? You see what I'm saying? Out jump Des Bryant? No. no. And that's 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 the league, and that's why I say we're looking at some of the most impressive athletes. And now we have a group of children mm-hmm. who are supposed to come in and replace them and go through this conditioning, right? And they're not going to be there. Ronnie Lott was he's listed as six foot two hundred and three pounds. I don't know when this was taken. Okay, six foot two hundred. Can he hit? He had to be lighter. He probably had to be lighter earlier in his Would career. Would have had to be and reckless abandon. Now Calvin Johnson runs six five. Yeah. What six five two forty two thirty yeah two thirty yeah. He would have no chance. It's not, it's not going to happen. It's not you know, going to happen. But but it's funny how can Steve Atwater hit Eddie Lacy. Yeah. He hit Nigeria. Wow. He he hit uh the Nigerian nightmare, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But by by today's terms the Nigerian nightmare might not be as big as we thought right. he was. Earl Campbell. Right. Look at LeGarrette Blunt and what he does to defend him. Yeah, exactly. I don't I don't know. I don't know. I, so that, I I yeah. think that in, in you know to kind of sum it all up, I think that we're we need to hold sacred what we're seeing now because it may not be football will be different yeah. you know what i'm saying I, and that's not even to talk about more and more research and more and more examples and cases are going to come forward involving things like the what is it the the chronic traumatic encephalopathy encephalopathy yeah, yeah. um you're gonna have more and more information that's gonna come out about the long-term effects so you take that you talk about what currently happens on the field then you take a look at what is happening socially Off the involving field. the media. And it's funny to me, too, how Goodell, like in the last week, you know, the whole Ebola thing mm. kind of comes out. You know, there's Just, more and more coverage of ISIS. He's like, yes. I, and, you know, if I was a publicist, if I was a media specialist and all that pressure was coming about and coming and talking to him, talking about him and he needs to lose his job, what I would have told him was, Stay the course, stem the tide. There will be something that comes up. Keep your head low. This too shall pass. Right. I mean, you got to remember something. 
Junior Seau. Yeah, I mean that was that seems like it was fifty years ago right now. Yeah. You know. And, yeah. And he was suffering from, you know, complications due to his play, you know, his playing in the NFL. We don't even mention Junior Seau. No. Will they have a day to celebrate Junior Seau in San Diego this year? Probably. Will Probably. it be on camera? Probably not. Probably not. You know, and that so though, and I that's what and I mentioned that to say there will be more stories like that. There will. There will. And you know. It's How do you savage. feel, Rod? Are you okay with there not being football because of these you know things? What, you know what, though? To be honest with you, I would be okay eventually. I would be okay relatively quickly um, because I recognize at, at the age that I'm at, I recognize the specific area that things play in my life now. And I understand that I can always turn off the TV yep. and I can turn on. If I, if I have the inkling to play football, right. I can play Madden. I can play Madden. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I can play man. I'm, quiet is kept. When college football started, you know, they stopped making college yeah. with 14. I didn't have 14. I did. I have 12. I have 12 on PS3 and Xbox because I got them both real cheap. Right. I started a season uh, right. with a college and I started doing a recruiting. And it's still fun. It's funner than watching the game. It's still I'd fun. rather do that than watch right. the game. So, is it... you? And you, if you notice on Facebook, I've been putting up videos of uh, knockouts. Yeah, I've been watching knockouts, and <laughs> me and my, son, I'm bad, I'm a bad parent. I've been watching it with my son. <laughs> me and my son, my son is like we talk about boxing, you know. And I look at that, and I'm like, football can't last. Right, it can't. Right, because look what happened to boxing. Yeah, look what happened to boxing, and people want to yeah. act like boxing was destroyed because of the money. It wasn't just the money. People chose not to box, too. People chose not to box. And, and it didn't necessarily Absolutely. keep up with the time. And I miss boxing. I, I don't. I miss boxing. I don't. I'm not into I'm not into MMA. I'm not yeah, into that either. whole thing because I feel like the skill set involved is different to a point. You know, but for, I don't know. Maybe I'm just nostalgic. There was something about. I miss boxing. heavy. I miss heavyweight bouts. That's what I miss. I miss heavyweight. Bouts. I don't even. To be honest, I don't the main qualify event. anything other like Mayweather. To me, yeah. it's not boxing. That's boring. I, 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 I hate to say that. I'm, no, you don't. No, because it's the it's, truth. It's, it's the it's truth. Bo- let's. I'll put it like this: Mayweather and people who are less than heavyweights, they box. They box. Heavyweights. It's the fight, fight. and that's what they used to call it. They fight. Fight night. Yes. Yes. So that, I, I miss the heavyweight bout. The world is watching. Bone Crusher Smith. Whoever wins is the toughest man on the planet. Yes. That's it. That's not necessarily true, but that's the way it works yeah. in heavyweight boxing. Yes. The history of this country yes. is about who's the heavyweight champion. That's true. Okay, so we don't have that anymore. That means we don't have boxing anymore. That's now true. the middleweight divisions and through the eighties and, and late and early early nineties when we have great athletes. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we have our Chavez, Hearns, Leonard. You know, we have guys that are very in, entertaining and yeah. interesting, and, it, and it's great tradition there. Mm-hmm. But when it comes down to it, who's the heavyweight champion of the world? That's all that mattered. That's all that mattered. That's all that mattered. You know, I was thinking about the whole Lennox Lewis getting beat by Rockman and then coming back and beating Rockman and the Holy Field and Foreman knocking out Michael Moore <laughs> yeah, and all that. All of that. And for me, that was like the. To me, that was my golden age, seeing all that transpire, seeing Buster Douglas knock out Mike Tyson, seeing Mike Tyson just being the most fearsome entity right. on earth. You know what I'm saying? There that was, was no the, such thing as missing that fight. So, now so, it's like, damn, do I want to drop that 80, that 60? Right. Or you go to somebody's crib and y'all split the bill. Yeah. But we're only talking, when we talk about Rock Bond and Lennox Lewis, and this, we're talking less than 20 years ago that's right and now it is nowhere to be found and it's not coming back because like i said people are choosing not to box i went into this is a little while back now i went into uh the gym where clarissa shields trains okay at at the burston okay okay um family member of mine is you know involved there and so we go in there to watch her train they got some new equipment for and there's some other guys that train in there with her but guess what's going on over in the mat across the hall mma mma all day at the bursting my brother loves it and i just you know so i can't sit there and say that we're going to get boxing back yeah i don't think we're going to get boxing back how are you going to convince now think about this 
How are you going to convince a 180-pound guy, you know what I mean, at the age of 18 or 19 to get into a boxing ring? You're not, especially when you have, like, look at this video. It's called <laughs> Brutal and Merciless Uppercuts from Hell. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, we, like, all the street fights that we watched, all of the MMA fights that we watched, and then this is right. an HBO fight. I wonder what year this is. It looks kind of old. I don't know. And so I, he's about to get his beak about, shot off. Something is, is about this Ring happen. King? Bing! Something is about. Oh, something is going to. He's, it's a wrap. You didn't even try. You didn't try to come out there, dude. He's done. He's done. We're gonna keep this on for the duration of the Go show. Go ahead. There's Mike. You know what I'm saying? There's Mike. That um, left uppercut was sick. I mean, it's just. Oh, oh my God. Oh, jeez, Louise. My favorite. We're gonna put this on the. We gotta put this. Yeah. Link on my the, favorite boxing combo is Terry Norris, the left right left combo. Terry yeah. Norris. Oh my God. It might be on here. Quiet as kept. Terry Norris beat Sugar Ray Leonard one fight. With um, that left, right, boink. <laughs> <laughs> he fell out to the ropes. That's what I'm saying. That's why. See, you, I'm I not, love it. Yeah, I I'm, love it. Mike, I love it. You know, it's Mike, not the right. And you know what? I can look at it with nostalgia because you just don't see it. It's anymore. It's not gonna happen anymore. You know what I'm oh, Those guys Jesus. are 200 pounds. Jesus. Woo! That guy should be playing uh, tight end for the Browns. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? So, needless to say, we'll continue to watch oh. the conversation. <laughs> we'll continue to watch the conversation about the NFL. Yeah. And you know. The rule changes and, you know, the fact that people aren't letting their kids play. Are, if you had a son, would you let him play? Yes. Why? I'm hard-headed. Okay. Leave it at that. Yep. I would, too. Yep. I'm, no, I, I, I'm, I have to be open about when I'm doing something ridiculous. Yes. Like I, told, like I said before, when you eat the Twinkie, you know that it's not nutritional. You, you know that it has to, hydrogenated oil in it. You happen to enjoy the shit you're eating. Yes. So, True. I know the risk and I'd like to let him play. Watch this. Watch this. And Watch this. Woo! Boink! Woo! That one two. Ooh. It's that one two. The one two is, is the is the killer. The one that left two hand is sit out there though. One Woo! Woo! Lay down, Man. bro. Lay down. Oh, oh here it go. goes. Here go big foreman. Here it goes. Michael Morris said that every time George Foreman hit the crown of his head, his whole body shook. He hitting you with that daddy strength. Bam. He's like hitting you with one of them speakers. God bam. Lay down. You have to go to sleep, dog. Lay down. So, uh, we're going to switch gears now, and let's talk about the Tanache album. Okay. So, Tanache is an artist out of the West Coast. Um, moved around a little bit in the mid-2000s um, with some kid groups, I think. Um, not, I think that she was affiliated with some, some small groups. Went through a couple of signings here and there. You know how hip-hop purgatory, you know. Oh, yeah. Being hip hop purgatory has two different levels behind the moat. There is the level that says you're not in the basement, no, but you don't have a release, right? That's purgatory. Then there's the purgatory of you have releases and now you're trying to get another release and you can't. But there's also the hip hop purgatory that you choose to be in, yeah. So, yeah, well, with the, the Lauren Hill wing. And yeah. the uh, of hip hop purgatory, so where you could actually be, a w like down the block from hip hop purgatory, and right. in in the arena of relevant and um, received, right. <laughs> but right. you choose to stay in uh, purgatory. Right. So so Tanache was she, and then the thing about her is that she really developed a strong grassroots following online. Um, as she started, she started to produce, you know, produce her own music. She learned a lot about gear. She learned a lot about arrangement and things of that nature. So she did a couple of, um, as I like to call them street albums, they're not mixtapes, but they're, they're albums, but they're free, um, in case we die and, uh, reverie. Um, I think it's called reverie, 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 something like that. Revelry. Um, and then she dropped Blackwater last, last year. And then, um, earlier this year, she dropped a single two on with Schoolboy Q yeah. that, got some really good radio play i knew being online as much as i am i always kind of keep a pulse of who of artists that are up and coming and it's always a perfect combination i was able to predict drake blowing up i was able to predict wiz khalifa blowing up i was able to predict action, action bronson would become famous but he might not explode right um i knew about asap rocky i knew about you know all kinds of different artists that have kind of come into their own and Tanache was one of those a couple of years ago there was a thread posted on the collie and i saw her i saw her videos 
I said, yeah, she has next. And she kind of has an Aaliyah, kind of an Aaliyah vibe, but probably not as great a vocalist as Aaliyah was, mm-hmm. but very throaty, very breath oriented. I'm hearing more you know. Sierra, but but not as up tempo. Not as up tempo. Yep. Yeah. Um, a lot of her stuff was very atmospheric. You know, she came around. She got a little bit of prominence during the era when the weekend started to get popular. And that whole, you know, we talked about it last show, the Negro Electronic. Yeah. That style had kind of started to come into its own. And I said, Tanache has next. If you go on my Facebook, if you go on Facebook, and I, I swear, like a couple of years ago, you, you will see me say that. So here we are. She has her first major label solo release. And I like it a lot. Yeah. I listen to it over the course of the week. And a lot of it is slow. You know what I'm saying? But I don't even consider it. You know, she got a couple of fast joints. I mean, you considering, you know, the audience she's trying to reach, she has to do that. But a lot of it is slow. And I think that that's something that's missing. We don't have, there aren't artists now that are making bona fide slow jams, even though content wise, a lot of it is very sexual. Yeah. You know, which is par for the course in a slow jam. But. You know, she's very affluent. How old is she? Like, she's only like 21. What are, we, what are we expecting? We're yeah. expecting these in depth manifestos. Aretha Franklin. No. You know, no. Um, but I like the album a lot. Uh, I like a lot. Early on, um, she sets the tone from the beginning where it's going to be a very smooth, slow album. Um, good production. She has production from. Mike Will made it. She has production from DJ Mustard, obviously the single, whatever. I mean, that's kind of par for the course at this yeah. point. Um, some of it, she did a couple of songs by herself, um, and on her earlier work, she did a lot by herself. So, I've been impressed by her not only from the perspective of her music, but the connections that she makes with her fans. She puts videos. She'll do like a Tanache meetup. She did one in London a couple, a few months ago where. She invited everybody who's a fan of hers to just come and meet her on a corner in London. And they just walked down the street and they talked and they did this and they did that. Hmm. So having that, I think that it's a good blueprint for artists that are interested in making a come up from an image perspective. You know what I'm saying? She definitely has a good image that can fit into a ma- the mainstream. Yeah, a lot industry. of different places. Yeah, because yeah. she doesn't seem to be too reserved she doesn't oh, seem to be over the top you know who she is she's the girl that's in the proactive commercials ah that's who she is she's in the proactive commercials too okay so you know she already has been able to kind of delve into that area okay. i mean she, she's a she's a very pretty woman but um the music that she makes fits what it fits the mode it's not you remember last year we talked i mean last week we talked about negro electronic yep Singing, she's not a singer. No, she's not a singer. You know, she's it's Negro no Electronica. There's a little bit of soul there, though, and 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 the reason why I say this is because some of the, and when I say beat selection, right? Yeah. We know that some of these things are chosen for artists, sure. especially of her age. Sure. But I hear some good old fashioned slow dancing up in there. Yeah. Like you know, and and that to me is what hooked me about this album. Yeah. Some of the beats are current versions of songs that I would have slow danced to when I was in high school. Right. So I can imagine young people um, dancing to these songs, listening to these songs in the car, um, because this music is not necessarily for us. You know, Mm -hmm. it's not geared towards us. It's something we can appreciate. Mm -hmm. But I think that a lot of these, and we're just talking about the beats, because like you said, Mm -hmm. the the lyrical content is very fluff, which is what I expect. Yeah. But I like the fact that it has a sound that I recognize. That it sounds, okay, I see exactly what she's trying to do. Yeah. I get the vibe that she's trying to put forward, and it's about these young people. Um, She's not dealing with any specific issues. She's not tackling any uh, young person angst. You know, she's just talking about being in love, being disappointed, getting high, feeling the beat getting dressed right. you know that and that's that's okay right. you know when you're 21 but i but the music um behind her it like i said it reminds me of just a just a newer version of what uh we would have enjoyed mm-hmm. uh at a house party you know mm-hmm. when i was 17 mm-hmm. you they know? Don't, and i like that yeah you know when during our when we were coming of age having the ability to make a quality slow jam slow jam could go far and it really gave you the ability to develop a bit more longevity Mm -hmm. than some of the artists that came about and i kind of see that i see that she has the ability to do that especially looking at her earlier work because the subject matter is not all you know the subject matter is not all the stereotypical things a 21 year old we're talking about like we saw that video yeah and she was talking about debt she was talking about 
you know, coming up economically. She, she, and that's kind of common thing. And I, when I say coming up economically, I'm not thinking like, you know, get money, you know. No, she ain't not doing that. that. She's not, not that you know, perspective. Throw some dollars at just, it. Just changing thought, yeah. you know. And especially she did a, um, she did an album called Blackwater that kind of tackled some of those things too from a deeper perspective. So my hope is that she has the ability to make music and put music out for a while that gives her that voice to be able to speak on those things because that's something that is different from a lot of the a lot of the artists period and mind you we talk about hip-hop a lot but the reason the only reason that i think it was important for us to bring this to the forefront was because a lot of what she talk about talks about has a hip-hop ethos to it yes you know and even the music too and and the music too because i mean you you very easily could listen to some of it and see a a rapper rapping on and you're expecting you and i thought some of the tracks i was expecting Somebody start rhyming, right? And then she comes in with this very high pitched, melodic, right? Uh, kind of breathy, you know, tone to it. It's very nice. And so what it? I mean, we expect something a little more right. hard to come through, and she kind of smooths it out. And I like that. Right. I like that song. Now, I guess you know, in her line of work, you don't necessarily have to go through the gauntlet and say, okay, what do we used to say? What does she sound like live? Yeah. Can she hold a live show? I don't yeah. think she's gonna have to necessarily prove that out with yeah. with the style of music that she does. She can exist. Uh, through the speaker she can and and the good thing about it is she has been performing for a long time she's mm-hmm. been performing since like i said since the mid-2000s so you know i gotta hear that uh she sung the national and, anthem yeah how did she do she did okay, okay. I, I don't you know actually i don't remember exactly how she sounded but i think if she was crappy i would we would, we would we would know yeah, yeah you're right you're um right, right. but you know she did um a set because uh, i've been watching i've been you know because i like to be right so <laughs> you know i've been watching she did a set on um the BET Awards in the pre-show n- knocked it out, destroyed okay. it, danced, okay. sang, it was killed all right. it, looked good, killed it. It was cool, killed it. And I hope was she clothed? Yes, as far as I can recall. Okay, I hope that she stays sexy, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Doesn't doesn't have to. She. I hope. I hope. Yeah. For, for the sake of my children. I think. Yeah. I think that she, um, has the capacity to. I don't see necessarily the same charisma that I saw in Beyonce when she first came oh, no, around no, 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 with no, Destiny's really. Child, but I see the fact that she can develop into a very strong mainstream artist. Okay. And even if she doesn't, because the mainstream spits people out so quickly, yeah. um, I could see her still making music that is quality and is the type of stuff that I like. I like she, yeah. atmospheric. She sounds dark. better than Ashanti. Yes. She sounds better than sierra yes um she doesn't have to have the range of beyonce but we will not no. be discussing beyonce in terms of the rest of the rb beyonce world is that's a that's a, something else a different mountain range she's an entity right so yeah as far as perspective mm-hmm. where does she sit i mean this is she's brand new so this is hard to hard to do we got we're talking about people to have volumes of work out here you know what i see is you, you, i look at everything in like you know she janae m- iq m- She's a better singer. She's I think a better so. singer than Janae. I think that she has more marketability than her too. Okay. Because she's a dancer too. Okay. But I look at everything as a three album package. You you give me three albums, you give me work in between the albums and features in between the albums, and then we have something to work with. I think that on her next I think that she'll gain a certain level of attention. She may not do ridiculous numbers, but nobody is doing great numbers now. No. She may gain a certain amount of attention where it allots her the ability to get connected with certain artists. She may be on a few, you know, maybe she'll do something like her her next single, her second single, her first single has Schoolboy Q. Her next single, Pretend, which was the song that you didn't like, yeah. um, has ASAP Rocky. Yeah, I didn't like that. So, and I'm not a huge ASAP Rocky fan anyway, but the connections are going to be there her second album there you know there will be some kind of single some kind of dancey single that's going to push it hopefully you know she she's able to maintain some level of control over her content because i think if she does what you'll see is you may see more production from her yeah you may see more her addressing deeper topics because like i said that's a benchmark of what she's done up to this point everything wasn't smoke drink have sex take pills get upset that get upset that my you know that, that he's not committed yeah, I, don't, exactly. I don't so what i want to know is do we have information from her that um 
that she's willing, like that she wants to be involved in the process for the long term. Like we found out about Beyonce late in the game that she makes all the choices. Boom, 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 boom. Right. You know that separated her. But it wasn't always. But it wasn't always. It wasn't that always way. that way. But this is what I'm saying. We're hearing that she's producing music. Right. Is this something that she does? Is it like Carrie Hilson, where she just willing to write? And you know, she tried to have kind of a career, but she was just you know a writer. I mean, that's what, a good what, question. What's going to happen here? I don't know, but but I don't know. But in a year that's been very very light in terms of music, in terms of music that has garnered my attention as a lifelong music fan um i think that she did something with this album with aquarius that was distinct it was impactful from the perspective of being not only being different but being a good starting point mm -hmm. you know um she may be the part because so much of her album is slow it may be a situation where that becomes an additional benchmark of her career okay. where that's something that can be expected from her and a lane that she can address that a lot of people aren't addressing yeah you know so she has that added to her skill set mm -hmm. that that's a good thing for her right that's so, what sierra tried to bring back sierra tried to bring back the 90s she's she's using 90s dance moves you know what i'm saying uh booty music drum kicks and she was trying to bring back that whole vibe but it just it just didn't, yeah. it didn't work for long. But you know what's funny is when it comes to longevity in the singing game, as I like to say, it, when you think of the great albums of the last 20 years in the singing game, the majority of them display some level of mastery of the slow jam. Absolutely. Look at Sade, mm -hmm. for example. Sade, now Sade, mind you, is not simply R&B. She's, she's timeless. something else. But... The reason that that music is timeless is because it can fit into so many different modes. Right. If all you make is music to turn up, that's all you can use the music to do. Right. But, you know, Maxwell's first album, D'Angelo's first and second album, yeah. both had that right. vibe to them. Right. Especially, I'm a big Voodoo fan. Yep. Voodoo is, is pro in my top five albums of all time. Okay. And it was very sparse, you know, and it's different than... It's different than a lot of things that came out around that time. Absolutely. But it really capitalized on that whole Soul Quarry movement, yada, yada. But she has the ability to, if she can make that a niche, her image is great. You know, she has a, a certain level of marketability and a certain level of personal. She followed me on Twitter. That's I'm, I'm definitely a So a now we there. get the information you that know, we needed. Um, yeah. You know, awesome. I, I, I think, but I think that that's a good thing. I think that, um, She's really made a connection with her fans. She has people who will always support her um, beyond what maybe some other people are doing. Oh. Wow. Excuse me. Um, my excuse friend. me. Yeah. And um, so I, I like it. I like the album. I would give it a solid on a, on a five mic scale. We still use the five mic scale from, from source. I mean, from the source. Yeah. Back in the nineties or whatever. I still give it, I would give it a solid, four to a four and a half yeah I'm, and the reason why is because there are a couple of you know um dj mustard doo-doos yeah there's a couple of every dj mustard it. song you have on your album will decrease it by <laughs> this is the a half of my ladies and gentlemen this is the rod wallace metric it is <laughs> you it have is. dj mustard to other track ratio right <laughs> dj mustard automatically will subtract one half microphone <laughs> yeah from every record that he has on your album. No, I can't say that because, you know, no, no, it's but not the, for me. No, I, and I agree with, with a solid four. And the and, and reason why is because some of that, <clears throat> the, the, the album did start to get predictable. It did start to get predictable for A little me. bit. Um, but I enjoyed most of it. And I enjoyed the, the approach to the music, first of all. And then finding out that she's involved and, and she possibly involved in doing some of this herself. She's... You know, carving out a lane, so I want I support that. So four mics, I think, is legit, for sure. So shout outs to her. Follow her on, on follow her at Tanache T I N A S H E. She might follow you back. Isn't that wonderful? Follow us at P A R Podcast. Yes, sir. Email us at Pick and Roll Podcast at Gmail dot com. Visit us at Pick and Roll Podcast dot com. Um, let's see. I think that'll. Any that'll, last thoughts? Hold it done. That about right. Hold it done. P O P. P -O -P. Pimp squad. I be out. I be out. I be out. Hold it down. <laughs> P.O.P. for life, baby. I be out. <laughs>
No doubt. <laughs> Have a good week. I'm Rod Wallace. I'm Quentin Barrett. And this is The Pick and Roll.